talk about Dead Bro Brook. But before I begin the character that got in on Dead Bro Brook, I want you to go into the comments and tell me what straw hat I should talk about in my next discussion video. Because it's two straw hats, then a Naruto character, then another two straw hats. That's the way I'm going to be doing this. But yeah. So to start off with a little bit of history, Brooke was introduced in One Piece Manga Chapter 442, which corresponds with anime episode 337. He had been a member of the Rumbar Pirates and the Straw Hat Pirates. He used to live and serve in, the, in an army in the North Blue and had some connection to the Vinsmokes, which I will talk about later. He he had first appeared in the Thriller Bark arc. He was actually the first character we met that arc, and the character that started and caused the arc to take place. His shadow was stolen since he had eaten. He ate the. Let me look on my budget. He ate the uh, revived, revived fruit, also known as the Yomi Yomi Yomi. So that's the thing he did. So, he, it gave him the ability to come back to life after dying. Now, this does give him a couple other abilities. He can do astro, proje astro projection, which is when you, your soul like leaves your body. It's a pretty relatively powerful ability. I like it. It's a pretty cool ability. Um, he has a couple other abilities, such as he is really, really fast. But those aren't really devil fruit abilities. They're more than just special abilities that he had because of the circumstances of his body and fruit. So, the story with Brook is that 15 years ago he was a member of the Rumbar Pirate. They got trapped in the Florian Triangle and eventually died at sea. They all died of starvation and other means. Brook died and his soul, like, it's just like the only real hint at the afterlife we got in One Piece. I'm not sure if we're going to see the afterlife in One Piece. I doubt it, but who knows. But, his soul, like, left his body, but did it pass on, and his soul was, like, wandering the sea, and it took him 15 years to find his body, so his body fell apart. Like, his skin molded, it, it came off, and everything, so he became a skeleton. Now, how this works, I don't know. This makes you question how the fruit itself works, because he shouldn't able to be, he shouldn't, he should, if we're being realistic about it, he should have died the minute he re-entered his body. He didn't. He is somehow still alive. I don't even know how he can die. I don't understand how Brooke died, because of the fact that he doesn't have a heart. So it's, there is no, so it's very complicated, and Devil Fruit weird. I could do an entire video, like 20 minutes, just speculating on a Devil Fruit. We're going to talk about his Devil Fruit more briefly at the end, but I wanted to mention, I'm not really sure how that works, because you would assume, he, I, I get that he had come back to life and his body had been fully intact. He wouldn't die no matter what. Like, he couldn't die of old age. And I get it. I get his body needs to be completely destroyed. And I get he still does need to eat. I mean, he can still eat. He can fart. He can apparently get turned on. I'm not sure how that works, but it's anime, so... You, you, there are a few creative liberties you can take with stuff like that. It's weird. I, I guess you could say Brooke gets the best boners on the ship. Huh? 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 No. No one? Ah, uh, good, good, good job, Jim. Good job laughing, Jim. Yeah, I, I see you laughing, Jim. No, but, um, let's talk about, uh, Brooke, Brooke's character arc in Throw a Bark. So, Brooke just wanted to die. He didn't want to die, he was just kind of hopeless. And he didn't want the Straw Hat to get killed in their fight with Get Komoria. So, you know, they volunteered, they got his, they eventually took down Gekko Moria. He helped them a little bit. It's actually very interesting. I mean, Brooke was a part of the arc, but he wasn't like the centerpiece of it, which I liked. Like, 
Gundam for the character joined the group. When Nami joined the, the Straw Hat, she had an arc. Like, yes, like, even when she joined in Orange Town, she played a key role in helping Luffy defeat Buggy. Like, she tied up the body part, and then she had an entire arc just dedicated to herself. Sanji had the Barate arc. Chopper had the Drum Island arc. Robin had any lobby. Frankie also had any lobby, I guess you could say. Frankie. But Brook was kind of just there, and yeah, at the end he joined. So what happened with Brooke was that he had a, when he was a member of the Rumbar Pirates, he had a friend. He was a member of the Rumbar Pirates had a friend that was a whale named Laboon. Yeah, that's probably one of my favorite pieces of writing from Oda. It's, 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 it's genius. The foreshadowing, like, because uh, Crockett mentioned that well, Boom was waiting for his crew to come back to him. He was waiting for a group of pirates. And that, and then that ties into how Crockett was a member of the Roger Pirate. If you don't know, the reason Crockett was even a member of the Roger Pirate in the first place was to look for Brooke crew, the Rumbar Pirate. So, they, they leave Laboon and tell him they'll come back. But they, of course, get stuck, as I said earlier, in the Florian Triangle and die. And Brooke is trapped there in the Florian Triangle for 15 years before he meets up with Luffy. I want you to imagine that for a minute, for a moment. Let's talk about this shit. Imagine being on a ship. Now, I don't think you have the saddest bad story. Probably the third. I would say the third. Second saddest. Robin first. Brooke second. Then Sanji. Then Nami. Um, other you're right. That's a video topic. Ranking the, ranking the backstory. I did one on that. Sanji had a pathetic one. But I did do one on that. But the point is. Is that he was alone on that ship for 15 years. Imagine no human contact. I don't mean like sitting in your house and playing One Piece Thousand, Thousand Storm on your phone. Great game by the way. Check it out. But uh. For, for 15 years. I mean no human contact. It sounds terrible. It's on a ghost ship. I mean, that's just me that, that's 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 horrible. It's, it's horrible. It's one of the most terrible things I can imagine happening. I regret or not. Then then that. I I would not want to live for five. I wouldn't want to live on a the. I wouldn't want to live five years of a book that went with lived it through. Like that's just it's horrible. So. Yeah, so that's Brooke's backstory. Now, what I want to talk about now is the reason he joined the crew. So, the Straw Hats mentioned somehow Laboon comes up. I'm not even sure how. I don't remember how it comes up. Somebody, I think Brooke tells them the story of the Rumbar Pirate and he mentioned Laboon. Yeah, what happened? He, he tells them his story, he mentions Laboon, and Usopp's like, We know Laboon. And he's like, Laboon's still alive? And he's like, yeah, and he's waiting for you guys at the Twin Capes. And Brooke's like, I need, I need to get back. And that's where Brooke's goal becomes. To reunite with his friend Laboon and keep their promise. And probably play him some big stick. By the way, Brooke's the musician of the crew and he's a re And by the way, fun fact, they got a real artist. Like a real singer to do him. Like, the guy that does it, Brooke knows how to sing, which is great. He's great, by the way. Big steak. Oda's also good at writing songs, apparently. Like, Big Steak, or Big Stock A, or whatever you want to call it. Great song. Love it. Bone to the Wild, New World. <laughs> All great. Though I do wonder what that would like to see in the, to read in the manga, like if you're reading it on a week-to-week -week basis. You might, you might have been like, oh, I can't wait for it to be, be anime, so I can hear it. But, um, yeah, all Brooke songs are great, but... So, eventually he joined the crew and he squared allegiance to Luffy. He asked if he can join. Luffy says, sure. And this whole thing where he's like, Brooke finally has friends again. And he's like, I'm happy I'm alive. And by the way, the thing where Brooke joined is great. The one, Brooke is the only crew member, no, the McGregor Robin. But he asked... He asked to join, and even with Robin, Robin, like, she knew what she was doing. She built this shit up. She was like, 
She hid away on your ship. She like blackmailed them. She gave this whole speech. Bro, just like, can I join? So she's like, sure. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's like, especially after we did our, like, and we just got done with any freaking lobby. And there's our long park. And oof, stop, Lancer. All of that. All that dramatic bullshit. <laughs> Bro, can, just, can I join? Sure. But so that's a great thing. Now, um, Brooke's power. Another thing I want to talk about is how they relate to Theto. One would assume if you were talking with Theto, he would die. Just flat out. His delivery would stop working. No. No, that's not it at all. I, I don't know how you killed Brooke. Like, I talked about it before. I don't know how you I don't actually know how you could kill Brooke. Unless you, like, drowned him, I guess. I guess theoretically you could drown him, but you would appear to kill Brooke, you would have to, like, destroy his bone. I guess. You would have to, like, in, kind of like on some, like, Dragon Ball shit, like, you would need to, like, incinerate the bone. Or somehow disconnect his soul from his body. I don't know. It's all, it's weird. But what I want to talk about with Brooke, mainly with his power, is how he relates to Sea Stone. When he touched in with Sea Stone, or the submerged within seawater, he reacts like any other Delphurt either. He is weakened, he can't use any of his Delphurt's abilities, but he can still speak, and all of that. It's weird. It, it's really weird. Like, he still has all of his weird, the weird abilities that come with being an undead revived skeleton. It's odd. It's bizarre. It's kind of like how Chopper seems to still be able to think when he's in Sea Snow. Right? Like, like how, can Chopper do that? I don't know. But it's weird. It, 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 it. Brooke Delfruit is freaking confusing. I'm going to do a whole separate video on it. But I, for one thing, I'm going to talk about in this video. Now, we talked about Brooke and character Delfruit for 12 minutes now. Let's quickly talk about a future role in the theory. As of the recording of this video, he's being held captured by Big Mom. And he is playing a large role in this arc. Now, a big thing about Brooke is his, is his soul power. Now, he's not, he's not the strongest, but he's stronger than, like, Luffy and... <laughs> he's stronger than Luffy. Yeah, Brooke is cracker level confirmed. <laughs> I'm an idiot. He's stronger than, like, Nami, Usopp, Chopper. But he's also, in my in my opinion, not as strong as, like, Robin and Frankie. Now, this is my thing with Brooke, alright? Brooke's powers are bizarre. I thought his ice sword, like, I forgot his name, but his ice cane sword, that's weird. That is some weird shit. It really is. Like, that shit is bizarre. But one of his abilities is that he can free people. Like, with his sword, that's one of his new abilities. And, I don't see Brooke having this, like, massive role. Like, he's no Robin. Like, his role is really going to be what it's been up till now. He's going to fight people. He's going to, like, have roles. But he doesn't have, I think, like, just massive. I've, I've always said he was the least important draw hat. He's the musician. There isn't much to talk about on the forefront of his role. With Brooke, with Brooke, it's more fun to talk about him. Brooke is more of an in the moment character. And there are some things that are fun to speculate with his power, which I'll get to in a couple minutes. But, um, but I don't have a ton to say on his future role in the story. I don't really have an idea for him. Like, he's not like Robin, who were like, holy shit, like, this girl's important. With got undermined a bit, which I'm going to need to, uh, talk about. And that I made you a video on that, like, this one. Like, yeah, I made you a video on that next week. I like, I, I'm coming up with video ideas. I like talking about Brooke, I mean, it's so irrelevant. Actually, I did a video on it. What's his introduction? Yeah, it's diary. I'll briefly talk about it in here. I don't believe so. I feel like, two things. One, I think Oda wants 10 crew members. There's nine at the moment. Luffy said he wanted ten. I think he was including himself. Though, if you got Brooke, then you would only need one more. Please be carrot. 
please be carrot. But, you know, so, so that's what I think on that. I think he just wanted to introduce another crew member. He wanted a musician. A pro- I would assume he especially wanted one for the anime. So they could have, like, the singing and, pro- and all the instruments and all the soundtracks. And you can make money off of the soundtracks. I mean, that's my thought process on that. But, um, it's the thing with Brock, alright? As I said, he's more of an in-the-moment kind of character, and he wasn't... I just... He's more fun to talk about when he does something. Like, I could talk about what I... He more... was. I'm very interested in what's happening right now in the story, and I'm assuming you're gonna have to fight Big Mom to save Brock. But that's more so a plot thing than a Brock thing. So, let's move on to his ability. Okay. Well, the, I'm sure that was on. His Awakening. Specifically. So, as we know, Devil Fruits has this thing called the Awakening. It's pretty much just, just OP ability. Kind of like a Bankai from Leaf. Like a second ability. But it ties into your original. Like, the Flamingo had a Paramecium Fruit. The String String Fruit. He could control strings. His awakening allowed him to turn stuff into string. Like he turned the ground into string. So, very similar. So if Luffy had an awakening, maybe he would turn things into rubber. Or become more, more elastic. Or be able to like, stretch his body more easily. Like Mr. Fantastic. I don't know. But Brooke, there's a theory that Brooke can bring back the dead. Now, you're all probably thinking, no, 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 no. We don't need that. And I agree. One of the great things about One Piece is that, unlike, unlike in Naruto, where literally the four, the, first time, the four part two even started, they had reintroduced the reanimation technique. So, by the, by the end of the second arc in part two in Naruto, there were two ways to bring back the dead. The light transfer technique and the reanimation is your Edo Tensei. In Dragon Ball, you have the Dragon, you have the Dragon Ball, the Namekian Dragon Balls, and the Super Dragon Ball, all of which can do practically anything. I, in, in Bleach, I don't believe they're the message of bringing back the dead. I mean, you have Orihime's ability to reverse time, which is. Which, okay, Orihime can reverse time. Another video. But, sorry, I'm very sensitive about that. <laughs> no, but, um, so, the great thing about One Piece, as we all know, is that there is no coming back. Now, the only character who can come back from the dead is Brooke. Brooke had a devil fruit, that was its, its ability, and there's only one of every devil fruit. So we know there's no other devil fruit that can do this. There are be- a devil fruits that can probably prevent the, like, save somebody that's half dead, or like bring back, or bring back somebody's soul. Like there are other, there may be one or two other devil fruits. I mean, your big mom soul soul fruit. She may be able to bring back the dead theoretically. Who knows? But the theory goes that if that Brook can't bring back people dead to dead, the dead from the dead permanently, but for a matter of moments. So he, so there is a theory that he's going to bring Ace back from the dead, and there are going to be some. Really, like, man, Luffy never really got closure with Ace. Like, he blamed himself. Luffy thinks it's his fault Ace died. And he never really got closure. So it would be really cool if you could give Luffy closure by having Brook bring Ace back for like five minutes. Not five minutes. You know, as long as, as long, for however long would need it for them to have a conversation. Like, let Luffy and Ace. Maybe Sabo will be there too, please. Oh my god, that'd be amazing. You know, that, that, you know, that would be awesome. There. That's it. Like, bro could bring Ink back with a double fruit for like, in a, for like a day. Maybe, no, less than a day, like two hours. And you're gonna have Luffy and Ace, or Luffy, Sabo, Ace and Sabo, and have to sit around and just talk it out. Have their closure. That would be amazing. Now, I believe the disability would be very specific. I believe you would need the body. 
I, I believe you'll probably need the body. I believe it will, will probably incapacitate Brook. Like, I feel like once he did it, he would be incapacitated for the entire time they were on Conscious. I feel like Oda, Oda, no one, I know, Oda doesn't like making things. So, Oda rarely does the ridiculous or the top super, super OP shit. Like, he rarely does. He, there are pa characters that are overpowered. They rarely get a character that's in a, an ability that just breaks it. That just breaks the story. And they could be like, well, why don't you just have that done? And all of our problems are solved. He, he, and that, I can't think of any ability that really does break the story. The only ability that I would say is borderline broken in Whitebeard, Tremor, Tremor no me, or Quake, Quake, for, or whatever you want to call it. Or Magura, Gura no me. But, um, so I believe Oda would limit the hell out of the ability. But I do think it's likely that we could bring Brook back. Not Ace back for a little bit. Thanks to Brook power. Now, there is, thanks to Brook power, there isn't much else to say on Brook. Uh, another ability. This is a quick little theory for our Soul King Island watchers. So, yeah. I'm going to make it brief that I want people to be able to watch this video after the arc ends. But one possibility that Brooke could open his head up and put the pony goods in his head. I just wanted to suggest that people seem to forget Brooke can store snakes inside of his head. So that's a very interesting idea. That's about all I have to say on Brooke. Tell me who you think I should talk about next in the comment section down below. I'm probably going to record a couple of these. Well, I, I'm probably going to record my Kakashi. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to record my Kakashi discussion tomorrow and just have that recorded. But tell me if you want me to do it. What straw had I to do next in the comments? I can't decide right now. But I am going to record my Kakashi discussion tomorrow just because I need to record it anyway. So, again, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Tell me what to do next in the comments. Just talk about Brooke in the comments. What do you see him doing in the future? His future role? Future ability? What do you think his awakening is? All that shit. Hope you guys enjoyed. Like the video if you did. Comment your thoughts. Subscribe for more character discussions like this. I love doing these. I can just ramble about a character to you guys for like 22 minutes. So they're a lot of fun to make. Subscribe for the the core. Um, yeah. I'm tired. I'm gonna go, probably going to go to sleep now. Have a great day. It's a One Piece Nation signing out.